Hello and welcome to Lesson 9 of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course offered by Simply Learn. This lesson focuses on HBase. Let us explore the objectives of this lesson in the next screen. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the HBase architecture and describe the HBase data model. In addition, you will be able to identify the steps to install HBase. You will also be able to explain how to insert data and query data from HBase. In the next screen, we will introduce HBase. Apache HBase is a distributed column-oriented database built on top of HDFS or Hadoop distributed file system. HBase can scale horizontally to thousands of commodity servers and petabytes of data by indexing the storage. Apache HBase is an open source, distributed, and versioned non relational database modeled after Google's Big Table, a distributed storage system for structured data. Just as Big Table leverages the distributed data storage provided by the Google File System, Apache HBase provides Big Table like capabilities on top of Hadoop and HDFS. HBase supports random real-time CRUD operations. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. The goal of HBase is to host very large tables with billions of rows and millions of columns atop clusters of commodity hardware. In the next screen, we will focus on the key characteristics of HBase. HBase is a type of NoSQL database and is classified as a key value store. In HBase, value is identified with a key. Both key and value are byte array, which means binary formats can be stored easily. Values are stored in key orders and can be accessed quickly by their keys. HBase is a database in which tables have no schema. Column families and not columns are defined at the time of table creation. In the next screen, we will focus on which companies use HBase. Some of the companies that use HBase as their core program are Facebook, Netflix, Yahoo, Adobe, and Twitter. In the next screen, we will focus on HBase architecture. HBase has two types of nodes, which are master and region server. There is only one master node running at a time, whereas there can be one or more region servers. The high availability of the master node is maintained with Zookeeper. The master node manages cluster operations like assignment, load balancing, and splitting. It is not a part of read or write path. The region server hosts tables, performs reads, and buffers writes. Clients communicate with region server for read and write. A region in HBase is the subset of a table's rows. The master node detects the status of region servers and assigns regions to region servers. In the next screen, we will continue to discuss the architecture of HBase. The image on the screen represents the HBase components, which include HBase master and multiple region servers. The HBase master is responsible for managing the schema that is stored in HDFS. Region servers act like availability servers that enable maintaining a part of the complete data stored in HDFS based on the requirement of the user. The region servers perform this task by using the HFile and Write Ahead Log or WAL service. The region servers always stay in sync with the HBase master. It is Zookeeper that makes the region servers perform a stable sync with the HBase master. In the next screen, we will discuss the storage model of HBase. We will start with partitioning and follow up with persistence and data availability. In HBase, a table is horizontally partitioned into regions. Each region is composed of a sequential range of keys. Each region is managed by a region server. A region server may hold multiple regions. Now let us discuss persistence and data availability. HBase stores its data in HDFS. It does not replicate region servers and relies on HDFS replication for data availability. The region data is first cached in memory. Updates and reads are served from the in-memory cache called memstore. Periodically, memstore is flushed to HDFS. Write-ahead log, which is stored in HDFS, is used for the durability of updates. 
In the next screen, we will focus on the row distribution of data between region servers. The image on the screen describes the distribution of rows in structured data using HBase. It shows how the data is sliced and maintained in individual region servers, depending on the requirement of the user. This type of distribution ensures availability of data to a specific user. In the next screen, we will focus on the concept of data storage in HBase. Data is stored in files called H-files or store files that are usually saved in HDFS. H-file is a key value map generated due to the map reduce operations performed by Hadoop. When data is added, it is written to a log called write-ahead log and stored in memory. This in-memory data store is called memstore. H-files are immutable since HDFS does not support updates to an existing file. To control the number of H files and keep the cluster well balanced, HBase periodically performs data compactions. In the next screen, we will discuss data model. The following are the features of the data model in HBase. In HBase, all tables are sorted by row keys. At the time of table creation, you need to define only its column families. Each family may consist of any number of columns. Each column consists of any number of versions. Columns only exist when inserted, while nulls are free. Columns within a family are sorted and stored together. Everything except table names is stored as a byte array. A row key, a column family with columns, and a timestamp with version typically identify a row value. Now let us discuss the other features of the data model. The starting identifier of the data model is a row key. Column families are associated with column qualifiers. Each row has a timestamp and an associated value. In the next screen, we will discuss when to use HBase. HBase is not suitable for every problem. HBase is used when you have enough data in hundreds of millions or billions of rows. It can be used when you have sufficient commodity hardware with at least five nodes. It is the developer's responsibility to evaluate HBase carefully for mixed workloads. Developers can use HBase for random selects and range scans by key. They can also utilize HBase when using the concept of variable schema. In the next screen, we will compare HBase with Relational Database Management System, or RDBMS. HBase provides certain advantages compared to Relational Database Management System. HBase allows automatic partitioning vis-a-vis -vis manual partitioning in RDBMS. HBase can scale linearly and automatically with new nodes. RDBMS usually scales vertically by adding more hardware resources. Further, as part of the Hadoop ecosystem, HBase uses commodity hardware, but RDBMS relies on expensive servers. HBase has mechanisms for fault tolerance that RDBMS may or may not have. HBase leverages batch processing with MapReduce distributed processing. RDBMS relies on multiple thread or processes rather than MapReduce distributed processing. In the next screen, we will focus on the installation of HBase. The following steps have to be performed for the installation of HBase. Get the download link for HBase tar file from the URL mentioned on the screen. Download HBase in your server system. Untar HBase in your server system. Copy the extracted folder in the location mentioned on the screen. Add permissions. Open the .bashrc file to include the settings. Add the lines shown in the .bashrc file. Refresh the .bashrc file. In the next screen, we will discuss how to get the download link for HBase. You can get the download link for HBase from the website mentioned on the screen. In the next screen, we will focus on how to download and untar HBase in your server system. Once you get the download link, you can use the wget command to download the related files of HBase in Ubuntu as shown on the screen. Once the files are downloaded, untar the file using the command displayed on the screen. In the next screen, we will continue to discuss the installation of HBase. 
Once the data is extracted, you need to copy the extracted folder to the location mentioned on screen. You can do this using the command shown on screen. Once completed, you need to give privileges to the user by changing the ownership of the folder using the chown command. In the next screen, we will further discuss the installation of HBase. The next step is to open the .bashrc file and include the settings. This is done by altering the .bashrc file and adding two lines as shown on screen. In the next screen, we will continue to discuss the installation of HBase. Once the data is saved, the bashrc file should be refreshed using the command shown on screen. In the next screen, we will focus on how to configure HBase. You need to perform the steps as shown on the screen to configure HBase. We will discuss these steps in detail in the next screen. Configure the HBase environment and set the Java path to ensure that HBase has access to Java Virtual Machine or JVM as shown on the screen. In the next screen, we will continue to discuss the configuration of HBase. Open the XML file and type the XML code shown on screen. This will set the root directory, timer, and distributed file system interaction. In the next screen, we will further focus on how to configure HBase. Open the region server files as shown on the screen and add the IP address of the system which will act as region servers. Use the command shown on screen to start the HBase service that can be verified by typing the JPS command. In the next screen, we will discuss a business scenario on how to install and configure HBase. Mike has to analyze a large data set containing blog contents. Since the assignment is complex and such analysis may be required in the future, Mike decides to install and configure HBase. The demo and the subsequent screen illustrate how to install and configure HBase. In the next screen, we will look at a demo on HBase. This demo focuses on how to install and configure HBase. Visit the website hbase.apache.org. Click the Downloads link to get a download link for HBase. Click the Suggested Mirror link. Right-click the HBase 0.9.4.1.7 forward slash link to get the file listing for HBase version 0.94.17. Right-click the HBase 0.94.17.tar.gz and click the Copy Link Location menu item to copy the link in the clipboard. Click Open. Navigate to the Ubuntu Server Shell screen. Type wget and paste the link. Press the Enter key to start the downloading process. Use the command shown on the screen to untar the zip file once the download is complete. Press the Enter key. Copy the extracted folder in the location mentioned on the screen once untar is done. Use the command shown on the screen to change the ownership of the HBase folder where SLOOO is the username of the Ubuntu system. Use the command shown on the screen to edit the bash RC for adding HBase prefix. Press the Enter key. Scroll down and ensure you type the parameters as highlighted in the video once you are inside the bashrec file. Open the HBase env.sh file as shown in the video to set the HBase environment file. Enter.
Ensure that you add the highlighted line on the screen in this file to enable HBase to have access over Java. Use the command shown on the screen to set up hbase-site.xml. Ensure you add the highlighted area in this file. Use the command shown on the screen to set up region servers. In this case, your system will act as a region server. Add local host. In case you have more machines, add the IP address of those machines that act as region servers. Use the hbase.sh command to start hbase. You can verify whether HBase is running or not using WebGUI by typing HTTP colon forward slash forward slash IP address of the system 60010. You have successfully installed and configured HBase. Let us do a quick recap of the steps performed. You can connect to HBase using any of the following media. HBase offers a Java Application Programming Interface, or API, which can be used to conduct usual operations like get, scan, put, delete, and so on. Non-Java clients can connect to HBase using Thrift Service or using REST services. HBase also offers a convenient shell built-in, JRuby, where a majority of operations including admin functions, can be performed from the command line. HBase can also be accessed via Hive, Pig, HCatalog, or Hue. In the next screen, we will focus on the HBase shell commands. Some of the common commands that can be used from HBase shell include Create, which is used for the creation of a table, Describe, which is used for describing the named table, Disable, which is meant for disabling the table, Drop, which is meant for dropping the table, List, which is used for listing the tables in HBase. In the next screen, we will further discuss the commands related to HBase shell. The table on the screen displays the other commands that can be used from HBase shell. These are Count, which is meant for counting the number of rows in a table, Delete, which is used for deleting a cell value, get, which that is used for getting the contents of a row or cell, put, which is meant for putting a cell value, scan, which is used for scanning a table's values. Let us summarize the topics covered in this lesson. HBase has two types of nodes, master and region server. Only one master node runs at a time, but there can be multiple region servers at a time. The data model of HBase comprises tables that are sorted by rows. The column families should be defined at the time of table creation. There are eight steps that should be followed for the installation of HBase. Some of the commands related to HBase shell are create, drop, list, count, get, and scan. In the next lesson, we will focus on the commercial distribution of Hadoop.